Ralph Waldo Emerson once said, I unsettle all things. No facts are to me sacred. None are profane. Well, I guess Ralph wasn't a Singaporean. Here's something that was reported on February 14th, Valentine's Day 98, in the Straits Times. A fishball seller who is getting married was arrested for fondling a policeman working undercover during an anti-gay operation. He was fined the maximum $500. Now, with a published picture to give a face to the named offender, I would pretty much imagine that was one hell of a Valentine's Day celebration for the would-be groom. Now, we have been told that being gay in Singapore is not a crime, but homosexual behavior is. If that's the case, the press or even the authorities should make it clear if the operation was anti-gay or really anti-gay activity. It's very misleading. Unless, of course, blurring the two was intended in the first place. If so, why bother making the legal difference between the two? I mean, life would be so much nicer for all Singaporeans if all gay people were just thrown in jail. It would certainly make for an exciting witch hunt. In a place so boring, it labors over whether a local TV actor kisses for real on screen as hot news. Local TV actor actress. I mean, we'd be beaming to alien satellite planet if ever we had a Leonardo DiCaprio. Gay people, subterranean as they are, would probably not be deterred by that report from indulging further. You know how they are. Nonetheless, the report seems to be driving home some messages to uh, some gay people out there, and for the general public as well. One being, you may be gay, but you can't have sex. <laughs> A little ridiculous, I know. But hey, nothing is too ridiculous for us. Chewing gum ban, naked lunch passed with a PG rating. COE for motorbikes reached over $2,000, when that of a luxury car then was exactly the same time $50. Decision makers are trying to tell gay people that despite the granting of certain gay depictions in the entertainment and the arts, gay is still major taboo when it comes to our citizens practicing it. Never mind the wonderful tranny in the crying game, his English. Never mind the gay pathos and farewell to my concubine, it's China's basal. Never mind the hypocrisy, we see none of it because we feel none of it. Feeling is not contingent with our purpose of buying and selling. So lest some moviegoers get the wrong idea, it's time to rope in the scapegoats and set some examples. It's called marketing a bigotry. And anything with that word marketing has a way of validating itself in our market. Indeed, the word market cannot be overstated enough around here, I'm afraid. Another thing, you know, the fishball seller, he certainly did not know that the object of his desire, or curiosity as he claimed, was an undercover agent. I mean, let's face it, there's no way of knowing. So an unintended but clear enough message to all gay people is... Never touch a Singaporean. And if it isn't at all clearly implied a message to you, poor gay sod, let's just say that I, 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 firmly advocate that you don't touch a Singaporean. Why? I mean, hey, you never know if he's undercover or not. So all you despicable species of the human race out there, or rather, the Singaporean race, if you ever get caught in public doing your hanky-panky with some undercover agent, don't say I never did my best at risking my public name to warn you, for then I have only one thing to say. You deserve it because you touched a Singaporean. And don't you discredit my gush of partiality. At the end of the cruising day, the effect is all the same, even to others. Once you're caught, you're pathetic, a disgrace, and a worthless digit with little or no market value left, and our market governs all society. So please, for the sake of your fragile little life, your tenuous hold on being a Singaporean, you, Mr. Gay out there, don't touch a Singaporean. Especially if he looks like Mr. Muhammad Kamal Silahuddin. Huh? 
the undercover cop who nailed the fishbowl cell lie. If he looks good enough to touch, don't touch. Just to remember. A Singaporean who looks good enough to touch is never without strings attached. I mean, are you stupid or what? Just think. I mean, imagine for yourself now. Mr. Macho Muhammad with some hunky bill dressed in a pair of shorts. Ooh, super dishy, yeah? I mean, if you're that dishy, wouldn't you groom yourself for the next star search instead of wasting your precious time luring homosexuals? You know, personally, I couldn't understand the fishbowl seller's claim that he's, quote, not homosexual by inclination or desire, unquote. I mean, he should really understand that as a Singaporean amidst our money counter, being a fishbowl seller is already a worse predicament than being homosexual. I think he would have made a more sympathetic claim if he had told the judge that he's had enough of feeling fishballs, and he wanted a feel of something human to go on living here, you know? I mean, the judge wouldn't buy it. No market value, I guess. But I'd certainly credit the poor fella for having some real balls after all. His own, that is. Ah, <sighs> trouble is... We never bother to feel the balls God has blessed us with. In Singapore, the other man's balls is always bigger. The other man's balls is always bigger. That's the way it is here in Singapore. The other man's balls is always bigger. So be a yes man, climb to the top. Just be thankful for what you've got.